Hello and it's a pretty lovely, lovely good evening and hope that each one of you as always are absolutely, absolutely fine and we on our part always pray for your well-beingness. So hope that your studies are going on in full swing and anxieties quite naturally at this particular moment, howsoever we may try to curve it, but they move towards the what we call higher wavelength. But anyway, you need not require to worry about anything. You need not require to nurse any anxieties. First of all, be cool, calm. And uh, these are the what we call treasures to come out with a flying performance. So now coming directly to the business end uh, here on lots of requests uh, since last what we call seven, eight days, especially with respect to the analysis of the what we call past three or ten papers, because nowhere the solutions uh, are available, even in the website of the institute. We have seen the suggested answer, but you must have noticed actually they are hardly able to do justify to the questions asked in the sense means uh, nowhere complete solutions are given. So that is why the problem is a little bit high. But anyway, you need not require to worry on that particular count. But at the same time today, <coughs> I won't be, take, won't be able to take class for a pretty long period of time. Reason being is that today I had lots of works to do, but still just to meet my commitment, I am recording this particular session. So this is your December 2021 paper, December 2021 paper, remember one thing, correct? So this is the paper we are discussing now, obviously it is related to old slavers, paper 17 of CFR, <coughs> Corporate Financial Reporting, correct? As far as question number one was, uh, question number one is concerned, there are 20 questions, <coughs> each question commands actually one mark, so you have come you have, I must say, a golden opportunity to score 20 out of 20 out of this particular question, provided how deeply you have gone through the accounting standard part. That is also very important because that is also a part of your course. So quite obviously, if anything which is part of the course, you need to put a lot of efforts. So you have to do the in-depth study. You simply cannot go for what we call surfacial studies. Correct? So <clears throat> that is the main reason Institute wants to test. But let me tell you, actually, lots of questions which are available in question number one, I was very surprised to see that among these questions, among these questions, at least I came across 10 or 7 questions, at least 10 questions out of 20, which were strictly picked up from past examinations of some other professional bodies. But anyway, whatsoever it is given in your course, so you need to be able to solve it, correct? So let's come straight away to the point and Next time, because today I am not going to do the complete paper, it is impossible because the reason being is that, first of all, I will not be having more than one hour of time. I have lots of commitment. I have to do justification to the FR course, to the CFR course, and you know, in both the different languages. So a student always start complaining when I take the class in English. People start complaining why you are not taking in Hindi. It is not possible sometimes. You have to show a little bit of what we call a composer on your side. So. Uh, we are simply discussing the paper. The language should not become a barrier to comprehend the same. So we go now and start what we call today's this particular session with question number one. As you know, as far as your, this particular paper is concerned, section A we are discussing. In it, I have already told you there are 20 questions. Each question command one mark. Let's see how much time permits me today. I will try to solve this particular section today. And every day now I will come out at uh, a particular time to solve this particular questions and last three attempt question paper on my side I will try my level best to solve it and solve it to the complete and comprehensive satisfaction of yours. Sheena Tashika Limited made the following payment during the year ended 31st of March 2021. Now institute has played very safe it has simply given you net answers whereas uh, quite obviously, they should give you a detailed answer so that the student get a good and comprehensive idea regarding the what we call question asked and regarding the delivery of the answer also. Anyway, now if you will go through this particular question, you will find that lots of expenditures have been made. That means you need to have a good knowledge of AS26. This question is covered by this case study, should I say, actually has been covered by AS26. Rupees 60 lakhs has been acquired. Rupees 60 lakh has been acquired for a software. Suppose today if I am going to buy a software, the main question is, what is the maximum period in which I should write it off? So I should be aware of this. That is the only point the question is basically interested in. So if you have gone through AS26, you must have noticed that software must be written off within a maximum period of five years. 
correct? So that means 60 lakh divided by 5, I will write it off. Basically, question is asking in the final stages, question has, question has, Mm -hmm. Sometimes this pen actually creates problem. That is the only problem. What is the total amortization cost charged to profit and loss account? So that means when you will solve this particular question, what you will have to do? First of all, you will have to write the expenditure on software. This is your software expenditure. Software expenditure is 60 lakhs. And you should be aware of the time period in which it can be written off. So maximum time period is 5. So quite obviously, each year you are going to write... 12 lakh or whatever amount is given. Similarly, your next item is you have spent 60 lakhs to acquire a website for a period of 8 years. Now, question this time is trying to confuse you. You have paid 60 lakh to acquire a website and you are going to use the website for a period of 8 years. But irrespective of that, the standard is very clear that as far as website is concerned, the maximum time period which standard permits to write off website is five years. So you here you cannot actually write it, write it off in eight years. You will again have to write it off within a maximum period of this. Is it clear to you? Now the next one is rupees 60 lakhs to acquire a copyright for a period of 15 years. Again, you have spent some amount in acquirement of copyrights. Again, you spend 60 lakhs. Even though it is very clearly given that you are going to use the copyright for 15 years. <clears throat> but the maximum time period is 10 years. Correct? So, all intangible assets which you are acquiring must be written off within a maximum period of 10 years. However, there are some exceptions like software and website where the maximum period permitted is 15 years. Uh, 5 years, sorry. So, in this case, we have been given 15 years to confuse us, but we should be aware of this particular fact that the maximum time period which we may need to actually write off, uh, as I said, you know, the copyright is 10, so 6 will be your, what we call amount which you are going to amortize. So, this, you will sum up all these amounts which you are going to amortize and that will become your answer. Then further question says that 60 lakhs to acquire a goodwill of a firm. Goodwill of a firm. When we acquire the goodwill of a firm, as you know, in that particular case, the maximum period in which we can write off goodwill is 10 years. Is it clear to you? However, just to test your knowledge, question has further said that rupees 60 lakhs again we spend to acquire a goodwill. And this time goodwill is arising on account of amalgamation in the nature of purchase. If you have gone through AS26 over there, I have explained in a particular paragraph regarding this particular feature. Correct? Whenever we actually amalgamate with the company and amalgamation is in the nature of purchase, in that case, whatever goodwill is arise, whatever goodwill arises, actually, that goodwill must be written off within a maximum period of five years. So question wants to test you and test you very deeply. So this goodwill must be written off in five years period. So total amount amortized will be 12 years each year. Now, further question says that 60 lakhs to acquire a patent for a period of five years. This time you are acquiring a patent and you are acquiring a patent for a period of five years. So, every year you are going to write off 12 lakhs. So, it will be written off over a period of five years. And now, rupees 60 lakhs to acquire a stock exchange membership, right? When we acquire the stock, uh, when we acquire what we call membership, stock membership rights, the standard says actually, there is an appendix in the standard which states that such, such rights should be written off within a maximum period of 10 years. So, I will take the 10 years maximum period to write it off. Correct? Now, question says that we have spent rupees 60 lakh to the state government towards the cost of roads built in the vicinity of the project for the purpose of carrying material to the site. Here we are not acquiring anything. It is not an intangible asset or uh, asset for us. So this 60 lakh, I will directly, whatever 60 lakh I have spent to the state government, that will be written off to profit and loss account. Similarly, the question further further clarifies that this road belongs to the state government. This road actually belongs to the state government. We have paid 60 lakh. We are using the roads. So it's a sort of expenditure for us. Entire 60 lakh will be debited to profit and loss account. Similarly, rupees 60 lakh, which we have spent towards extensive special initial advertising for a new project is equal to 60. Uh, so 60 lakh plus 60 lakh and plus 60 lakh. Uh, 
So 60 lakh we will we have spent in advertising campaign. Now AS26 very clear that if you are uh, if you are actually going to introduce a new product and you are making initial heavy advertisement. So in that particular case, that particular expenditure must be written off complete, completely. So entire 60 lakh on advertising expenditure will be written off completely. And similarly, rupees 60 lakhs to drug to develop a drug uh, to treat the cancer. Same question is there in my account, case studies which I have given to you in my notes. So again, this expenditure 60 lakhs will be debited to profit a loss account because it is because AS26 criteria is not met. So any such expenditure, that means 180 lakhs you are going to debit uh, to the profit or loss account and all these items you are going to debit to your profit or loss account. Ultimately, you add them. So total amortization of expenses, amortization means how much actually we are debiting it to profit or loss account. That must be equal to 246. This is the correct answer. Correct? So this is your correct answer and I have solved this question also if you want here this is the solution unfortunately you cannot see this particular at this particular moment but the answer is correct is it clear to you so let me see if it is possible to reflect this or not I will try to correct no it is not appearing so this is the problem I will try to Reflect it other way around. Don't worry about that. Then further, it is given to you. It's a simple question. Next question is very simple question here. Just wait. What happened? Question number two. Now question number two, if you will come across, you will see here in question number two that X limited holds 51% of Y limited, correct? X limited hold 51% of Y limited, it is clearly mentioned. Y limited hold 51% of W limited. So whatever information given to us at this particular moment, I would say in this particular case that there is a company by the name of X limited. X limited is having 51% stakes in Y limited in Y limited correct and further uh, Y limited holds 51% of W limited X limited is having 51% of Y limited and Y limited is having 51% shares of W limited this is your W limited this is your W limited Y limited holds at of 51% of W limited. Now, there is another company by the name of Jet Limited. Question is telling you that Jet Limited is having 49% of W limited. Jet Limited is having 49% of W limited. Now, this question is related to your AS18 actually. Question is simply asking actually, which one is the related party? In this case, Jet Limited is having stakes in W. See here, X and Z cannot be related party in this particular case. It is try to understand this way. Jet Limited and Y Limited cannot be what we call related party because Z Limited has invested in W Limited. So W Limited and Jet Limited only can be the party. Answer is correct. Related party. Correct. Next one is... Here this time I think this answer is wrongly printed or sometime it happens, you can't, ex can't uh, actually help it out. Jivatma Limited, then very interesting name, Jivatma Limited purchased a plant for US dollar 50,000 on 31st of October 2020. Quite obviously this particular case study is related to AS11 which you have studied so many times. Correct in your earlier phases of education, I did not require to tell anything much about it. If I am going to acquire a plant for US dollar 50,000 on 1st of October 2020 and on this rate, question states that on 31st October 2020, the exchange rate is 61.50. So quite obviously, I am going to multiply it with 61.50. That means in Indian currency, I am paying actually this much amount. Isn't it or not? In Indian currency, actually, I am paying this much of amount. Is it clear? However, Question further states that uh, 
क्वेश्चन से इस टेट जीवात्मा लिमिटेड परचेज के प्लान फॉर यूएस डॉलर फिफ्टी थाउजेंड थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ मार्च टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी पेबल आफ्टर पेबल आफ्टर दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू आर सपोज टू पे दिस अमाउंट क्वेश्चन स्टेट डेट आफ्टर सिक्स मंथ्स द कंपनी एंटर्ड इन टू ए फॉरवर्ड कॉन्ट्रेक्ट फॉर सिक्स मंथ्स एट द रेट ऑफ सिक्सटी फोर पॉइंट टू फाइव डॉलर डेट मीन द डे ऑन विच एक्चुअली you purchase the plant you enter into a forward contract with the other company that in future will pay you after 6 months not today but in future we will give you a rate of 64.25 now logically the day on which we purchase the plant we are going to record it at 50000 into rupees 61.50 because on that date in which we purchase the plant the rate of exchange is actually 61.50 however whenever i am going to make the payment at a 6 months later correct so in that particular case how much payment i will have to churn out i will have to make a payment of 50000 into rupees 64.50 64.50 so that mean all in all i am incurring a loss because of this forward contract to the extent of dollar 50000 into what we call difference of this two if i will take the difference between 64.50 64.5 64.50 minus 61.50. The difference will be equal to how much? That is equal to three. Uh, what was the rate? 64.25 actually is the rate. That is the point. 64.25 minus 61.50. The difference is 2.75. Whatever difference is there, this is your loss. Now, if you are going to multiply it, I think it is equal to one lakh thirty-seven thousand five hundred. I don't think this answer is correct. Correct. So, into fifty thousand, yes, one lakh thirty-seven thousand five hundred should be your answer. Now, next question is related to a theoretical chapter. You must have gone through corporate social reporting chapter, correct? So, corporate social responsibility. Sorry, I told reporting. Uh, we have become accustomed to corporate financial reporting. So every time, in, in instead of saying corporate social responsibility, I said. reporting so this is a corporate social responsibility it's a small chapter in that particular small chapter you have been given what we call responsibility which actually lies upon the shoulders of of a corporate entity now corporate entities are also supposed to actually carry out their social responsibility acts and one act among them is that standard not exactly the standard but the corporate social responsibility guidelines actually says that every company will must spend 2% of the average profit i think some change has taken place what exactly that particular change is even i am not quite uh, aware of that earlier the rate is 2% and even the question has been solved with the uh, existing rate of 2% only but some amendment of late has been made as i told you i should be very honest i am not exactly quite well aware of what exactly is the new rate the moment i will come to know i will let you know definitely the net profit actually of last 5 years is given and you should because you are attempting corporate final corporate financial reporting paper final level paper you need to understand that you have to study quite hard so last 5 years this been sometimes no creating lot of problems last 5 years profits are given you need to understand that you have to take the latest 3 years profit first of all to solve the question so last 3 year profit if i will take that will be equal to 25 crores plus 20 crores and plus 15 crores i am not bothered about i am bothered about 25 crore 20 crore and 15 crore i am not bothered about this profit latest or last 3 years profit i will consider i will take the average of these profits correct after computing the average profit of last 3 years now i will take 2% because i know that it is mandatory upon the company to spend what we call their 2% of the average profit on what we call corporate social responsibility task and here the question actually clarifies further that this company during 202021 company incurred 7 lakh and rupees 3 lakh on free education and medical treatment of the company so in total company has spent actually 10 lakh now you will compute 2% of your average profit you will find that it is coming to near about 40 lakhs so that mean you should have had spent 40 lakh 
out of that actually you have spent only 10 lakh that is 7 lakh and 3 lakh so that means 30 lakh is yet to be spent so this is exactly what question is asking that what is the shortfall of expenditure on corporate social responsibility so 30 lakh is your correct answer is it clear to you or not 30 lakh is your correct answer now as far as this particular question is concerned this particular question is concerned question number five to be very honest with you just wait problem is that there are two sheets open in front of me problem is this just wait for a while just give me a second so that now in this particular question in this particular question It is given to you, actually this question is related to NBFC, let me tell you very frankly, first of all, this question is related to NBMC, correct? Question number fifth, first of all. Now, if you have gone through this particular question is taken straight away from our notes, straight away from our notes, I think question number 10, 9 or 7, Correct one of that question is there. You can look look over there and you can easily find out. In our notes, this question is absolutely available. So you should be aware about aware about the what we call rates of provisions. So that is the point. You can easily solve this question. And uh, this is NBFC question number 10, 8, 9, or 7. I'm not quite well aware of it. And uh, question number six is very interesting question. Again, this question has been picked up straight out of from our notes. If we will look, if we will open the notes of AS26, I think question number 15, 16, 17 out of that, uh, same question with same figures you will find over there. Again, you can find the solution to this question over there itself, but just to make the point, I will also clear that particular question, don't worry about that. An enterprise, question states that an enterprise acquired patent rights for rupees 4 lakh. An enterprise acquired a patent right 4 lakh. Obviously, when we acquire any patent right or any intangible asset, we have to write off the cost of that particular intangible assets. Correct. In case of patent right, if cash flows is given to us in the ratio of that cash flow, we generally write off that item. The product life cycle has been estimated to be 5 years. And it was estimated that this patent is going to fetch a return for a period of five years. And the amortization was decided in the ratio of estimated future cash flows, which are as under. So you have been given, these are your future cash flows. So during the next five years, total flow will accrue to you to the extent of 800. So very simple question. All you have to do is first you write the year one, two, three, four, five. Correct, and then you simply put the cash flows that is 200, 200, 200, then 100, and then 100. So, total flow right at this moment is equal to 800. If I'm and how much you have to write off, remember one thing you have to write off the cost of the asset. This is your cost of the asset. So, quite obviously, how much you are going to write off out of this cost you have to write off in the ratio of all these things. So that is 200 divided by 800 because total inflows is equal to 800. So into 400, this much you will have to write off in the first year. In the second year, you will write off 200 divided by 800 into 400. And in the third year, again, you will write 200 divided by 800 into 400. Now question says further, that is the interesting point. If question would have been silent, then in the fourth year, I would have written 200 divided by 800 into 400 and similarly in the fifth year, 200 into divided by 800 into 400. However, question has changed a bit of tone here. Now, the question states that after the third year, that means after the third year, after the third year, question states that after the third year, it was ascertained that patent will have an estimated balanced future life of three years. After the end of the three years, as per our original estimate, after the end of the three years, two years are remaining. But suddenly after the third year, now we found that three more years are remaining. Indirectly, it means now there is fourth year, there is fifth year, and now there is sixth year also. In our earlier calculations, we were under the impression that this particular patent is going to actually have a life of only five years. 
But suddenly after the end of the third year, we found to our dismay or to our what we call strangeness that the life will be of six year. And question further says that an estimated cash flow after the fifth year, that means in the sixth year, the cash flow will be equal to 50. Now you will have 50 more worth of cash flow. So the question basically is asking what, what will be the amount of amortization in the sixth year? In fact, from next three years, because already first three years have gone by, so in the fourth, fifth and sixth year, you have to find out. Actually, demand of the question is to find out the amortization expenses for the sixth year. I'm simply trying to tell you now how you are going to compute the amortization expenses for the fourth, fifth and the sixth year. Now in the fifth year, you think of this way around. Your remaining life is three years. And in the remaining life period, you are having a total cash inflow of 100, 100 plus 50, that is 250. So in the fourth year, you will write 100 divided by 250 into 400. I think it will be equal to 0 0.40. Similarly, 100 divided by 250 into 400, you will write this much of amount in the fifth year. And in the fifth year, which is the demand of the question, you will write 50 divided by 250 into 400. I think it will be equal to 0 0.20. And this should be a yes, 20 lakh should be your answer. Is it clear to you or not? This is how you are going to do this question. This question again has been lifted. I should say lifted actually has is available in our uh, accounting standard notes. Even this particular question, question number seven is also available in our notes. To be very honest with you, if you have gone through uh, the notes of AS20, you must have seen this question over there. Even under end AS33, we have included this particular question. Correct? Because AS20 and end AS33, quite obviously, up to an extent, are similar. So just pay attention down over here. Net profits for 2020-21 are 30 lakh is given to you. Honestly speaking, you will drive mileage of these sessions. If from next time, I will advise you because today's session will be quite short because there is no point in taking the session if you are not going to comprehend it the moment you should. Next time in the next class when you will come, you should come. You should have gone through accounting standard 26, accounting standard 19, accounting standard 20 or India's 37, correct? 26, 19, 20 and even 22. And I would love you to go through accounting standard 18 also and 17. So, and if you cannot go, I'm telling you in the YouTube, I have uploaded almost all the NDAs. Uh, you search out, search out AS Blast by Sanjay Wilkins, AS Accounting Standard Blast by Sanjay Wilkins, and in quick time, you can do all these standards. So, next time when you come into the class, you should be prepared with that. Then only you will drive the benefit of it. Otherwise, there is no point in what we call taking the class. Uh, otherwise, it is simply mere solution and no comprehension. Anyway, so net profit for 2021 is 30 lakh. Number of share outstanding prior to the rights issue is 10 lakh. Number of shares outstanding prior to the rights issue is 10 lakh. Question says that rights issue is one new share for each five share outstanding. Now, I'm going to ask you a very simple question at this particular moment. Our total number of share outstanding given to us is 10 lakh prior to rights issue and rights ratio is given to you as 1 is to 5. That means if you are having 5 shares, you will be given 1 share. So that means what will be the total rights issue for 10 lakh share? There are 10 lakh share. Every 5 shareholder will get 1 share. So if company will make a rights issue, then total number of share after rights issue will become equal to 12 lakh. Prior to rights issue, number of shares is equal to 10 lakh. And rights issue is being offered at the rate of rupees 25. It is also given to you in the question. Question says that last date to exercise the right is 31st of July 2020. Actually, later on, we have to take care of the timeline of the current accounting period 1 4 2021 till up to 31st of 3 2021. Why we have to take the care? The reason being is that because whenever a company issues the right, company gives you some time. For example, in this in this case, company has given you a time that till up to 31st of July. Please let us know whether you want to exercise the time, exercise these rights or not. This date is quite important. That means from the start of the first year till this date, there are four months. 
and from this date till particular this date is eight months. I will use this month period in this particular question. So total net profit is 30 lakh. Number of share prior to rights issue is 10 lakh. Now we have find out that after rights issue we have 12 lakh share. Question also says that rights issue has been offered at the rate of 25 and the fair value of one equity share immediately prior to the rights issue is 32. Now prior to rights issue the fair value is 32 that is also given in the question. Basic earning per share we have to find for 2021. For the current year we have to find out. In the current year we have to find out the basic earning per share. What is basic earning per share? Total net profits attributable to the equity shareholder in the current year divided by total number of outstanding share in the current year. Total profits attributable to the equity shareholder is given to us 30 lakhs. It is given to us 30 lakhs. Very simple. All I have to find out now is total number of share outstanding in during the year but now that is very that is not quite an easy task how, how to find out first of all you will have to find out the theoretical theoretical x right value you have to find out theoretical x right value if we have gone through in the as 33 or what we call uh, notes of uh, as 20 you must have noticed over there theoretical theoretical x right value I have to find out what we mean by theoretical x right value try to find out this way round how many number of shares you had in the beginning sir we had in the beginning 10 lakh share prior to rights issue you had 10 year, 10 lakh shares and the value of one share is 32 prior to rights issue it is given in the question that 32 is the value so total value of your 10 lakh share is equal to this much. Now, 2 lakh more shares have been issued. And these shares have been issued at the rate of 25. So total you have got 12 lakh shares now. And total value in your hands is equal to this much. That is 10 lakh into 32 plus 2 lakh into 25. This is the total value. Divide this total value by the total number of share. How much, how many number of shares you have now? 10 lakh plus 2 lakh. Whatever figure you will get, whatever figure you will get, obviously you are going to get some figure, correct? That will be equal to 320 lakhs plus 25 into that 50 lakhs and divided by 12 lakh. Whatever figure you get, after that, whatever figure you get, after that, what you do think, what you do, you try to find out adjustment factor. You will have to find out adjustment factor. In order to find out adjustment factor, actually you give me just one minute of time. Because if this way round, I will try to make you understand, you will not be able to understand. So let me clarify it. Just wait for a while. Just give me two minutes of second so that I can make you understand just actually all this electronic gadgetry nowadays is there so just you will have to give me two minutes of time you can see the black screen appearing and now some printout is taking place for your convenience you have to do this Actually, today I had lots of work to do, so that is why I cannot finish it down, but I just wanted to carry out. See here, this is the solution for you I have done. Correct? I will share these sheets also. Don't worry about that. Theoretical x right fair value, I told you, you multiply 32 with your 10 lakh. Is it clear to you? 10 lakh number of share you had in the beginning, multiply it with 32, and then... 25 after rights issue, sorry, 25 is the value of the rights issue, 2 lakh shares have been issued. So this is the value of total 12 lakh share divided by number of share, number of share 10 lakh plus 2 lakh. So I have done the solution also 320 lakh plus 50 lakh divided by 12 lakh. So this is the value which you will get over there. Now after finding out this value, as I was about to say that you have to find out adjustment factor. What is adjustment factor? Adjustment factor basically means theoretical x right value. Theoretical x right value you have, uh, you have found out 
Now, you have to take, in order to find out adjustment factor, first of all, you have to take into account the fair value prior to the rights issue. Now, we saw in the question that fair value prior to the rights issue was 32. Now, divided by theoretical x right value, you will get 1.04. It is known as adjustment factor. Now, you will have to find out, as I told you, the earning per share for the current year. Now, in order to find out earning per share for the current year, first of all, I will write 30 lakh. That is net profit attributable to the equity shareholders. After that, see here, below I have to do well, lots of things. Because below we have to find out total number of share effectively used. Generally, we say total number of share used during the year. Correct. So, total number of share outstanding during the year indirectly means total number of effective shares. In order to find out total number of effective share, how you are going to find it, that is very important. You had 10 lakh in the beginning. You had 10 lakh in the beginning. Correct. So, first you write the 10 lakh. Multiply it with 1.04. This adjustment factor will tell you as if in the beginning you were having this these many shares. And in the current year, I told you that I will use the timeline later on. In the current year, because rights issue was done on 31st of July, that means from the beginning till 31st of July, we use these many number of share. These many number of share we use till in the first four months. 10 lakh into 1.04 into 4 by 12. And in the next eight month, we use 12 lakh because 10 lakh plus 2 lakh into 8 by 12. Is it clear to you? So, you will get exactly 2.62. This question is straight away taken from what we call past examination, correct, of some other body also. And most of the question actually I came across which were straight away from the past examination body. And uh, I told you actually, see, there is no point in going ahead with the class, to be very honest with you. The reason being is very simple. Next time when you come out, you please come out. I told you prepared with 16, 19, 16, 17. At least go through these standard 19, 20, even 29. And if you can go through 26 and 34 and 22. I am telling you, just watch in the YouTube. I have uploaded under end AS blood playlist all the end AS. Within one hour, you can, what we call, finish off. Within 30 minutes, you can finish off one standard. So, you must make, you must go through those standards. Then only you will drive what we call good uh, mileage of this. Now, as far as question number 9 is concerned, I am not going to do it in the class at this moment. Reason being is that this question which is given in the suggested answer, it seems incomplete or not complete print is there. So, if there is no complete print, in the sense means we do not know till up to what period we have to compute the expenses amount. So, we cannot compute. So, that is why let me allow me a day or more. So, let me actually say this question, then I, then only I will do it for you. Actually, question number 10 deals with AS22. Now, question number 10, first of all, let's have a look over this. Question number 10. See here, in this question, I was talking about question number 8. It is not given in complete manner, so we cannot give the exact answer. Now, question finishes during the, that's all. Nothing more is given in this question. So, that is why I am not doing this question at this particular moment. Correct? However, it is, it is an easy question. So many questions under India 16 have been given similar to this one. So, should not be a big task for you to do it by yourself. It is not a tough question. Now, as far as question number 10 is concerned, that is related to AS22. But problem is that I do not know how many of how many among you have gone through AS22 or not. So, that is why I am telling there is no point in going ahead with these sessions unless I will find that you have 
come out uh, with all the guns blazing in the sense means you have you are quite well acquainted with AS portion if not at least next time be ready and I will finish it up today's session only after 10 question reason being is not because uh, I don't want to take any further session today the reason being is that I want you to understand it quite well but anyway I will do it for you in this question it's a very simple question honestly speaking question says that as you know AS22 deals with what we call simple words income taxes and directly or indirectly it deals with creation of deferred tax assets or deferred tax liability now question is simply asking you to find out the amount of DTA and DTL DTA and DTL is it clear to you or not now in this question first of all question says that in point number one company has charged depreciation of 7 lakh this much now let us say company has subtracted in the current year whatever net profits of company were there company subtracted 7 lakh 42,900 whereas question says that as per income tax the depreciation amount is equal to this much that means taxation authority must have subtracted 8,65,400 in the ultimate analysis when higher expenditure is allowed in income tax what will happen your accounting income I'm telling your accounting income your accounting income must be more than taxable income quite obviously because here you are subtracting lesser amount and here you are subtracting higher amounts so quite obviously your taxable income will be less in comparison to your accounting income that mean as per your accounting income you will pay your higher tax because your accounting income is higher you will pay higher amount of tax in comparison to what we call tax as per taxable income so whenever you will pay higher amount of taxable income whenever you will pay see here try to understand this particular point question says that company has charged depreciation of 7,42,900 in the books of the account correct so in fact company has charged lesser amount company has charged lesser amount so quite obviously companies taxable income is higher or companies uh, accounting income is higher in comparison to what we call taxable income if accounting income is higher quite logically I should have had paid higher amount of tax but as you know tax will be paid as per taxable income directly if my accounting income is higher in comparison to taxable income indirectly it means I am getting benefited in the sense because logically I should have had paid higher amount of tax but I will pay low tax because my taxable income is low but the point here is that presently you are paying lower taxes but in future you will have to pay more taxes so this the difference between these two you will take the difference you multiply it with 35 percent and it will give rise to deferred tax liability why it will give to rise why it will give rise to deferred tax liability you should be aware of this particular point correct that is why I am telling you next time when you come you come prepared with what we call AS22 also so that again I will revise all this portion so that you comprehend it better so taxable income in this particular case as I told you taxable income in this particular case you will have to pay the tax according to the taxable income because taxable income is low you will pay less taxes even though you were supposed to pay higher taxes but you will pay less taxes presently but in future you will have to pay more so it will give rise to deferred tax liability similarly question says that company has made a provision for doubtful debt company has made a provision for doubtful debts to the extent of 54,300 we know that every type of provision is not allowed under income tax every type of provision is not allowed under income tax so what is happening due to this particular expenditure what is happening due to this particular expenditure you are subtracting this expenditure provision for doubtful debts when you are computing the accounting what we call income while under income tax while under income tax you are not subtracting this indirectly it means this so because of this now your taxable income will be higher because your taxable income will be higher because you haven't subtracted any expenditure and your accounting income is lower so logically in this case you should have paid lesser taxes but you will have to pay higher taxes so even though you are 
paying presently higher taxes in future you will pay less taxes so that is why it's 54,300 into 35% will give rise to DTA will give rise to DTA similar absolutely same thing is with respect to company has debited shares issue expenses of 6,23,500 but it will but it will be available for deduction under income tax in the next year. That means in the current year, income tax authority did not deduct it. So similar to this, the difference uh, 6 lakh 23,500 into 35% will give rise to deferred tax asset. Correct? And similarly, 7 lakh 84,500 worth of expenses has been charged correct under what we call accounts but disallowed under income tax so again it will give rise to deferred tax asset you will take the 35 percent it will also give rise to this your answer number one is correct i have checked it and i can show you the solution if you want so till up to 10 today we will have we have done and next 10 question i will do in the next session and then in the upcoming session i will do the entire short questions and then long questions correct so three three sessions i will require of one hour from next time to finish all the past three attempt papers today because of shortage of time i am taking only this much of session allow me to do so because i had lots of work today and i'm very tired also but i hope you would understand and you must have also seen that how much efforts i am doing actually nowhere i am telling you you will get the full solution this is the solution i have done for your question number 10 correct so the difference of first part will be 1,22,500 into 35%, it will give rise to DTL and then 54,035% uh, will come to 19,005, that is DTA, again DTA, again DTA. This is solution to question number 10, but I will meet you in the next session to discuss further because reason is that it is now almost, to be very honest with you, 7.30 and I have to upload this particular session by 8.30. I told you today actually because of lack of time i am doing only this much but next time i'll meet you and take a lengthy session but i hope you'll come prepared with all those standards which i told you so okay thank you very much to give your association for this much of time and for your cooperation so shall meet you in the next session till then have a good day and good night too